Hi everyone. So my wine is Petite Syrah. Okay, so let's start off with the origin and the history of the Petite Syrah. So Petite Syrah is from Montpellier, France, where botanist Francois Durif created it around 1880. Um, it's a cross between the Syrah and the rare Pelosan, Pelosan um, grape. And the Pelosan grape is so rare, it's almost extinct. And it is found in the French Alps. So that was pretty interesting to learn about. Uh, in the mid 1880s, uh, it was brought over to America, imported to America, where it was then given the name Petit Thra, what we call it today. So where is Petit Thra grown now? The Petit Thra is now mostly grown in California. Areas include Lodi, uh, Paso Robles, Napa, Sonoma, Mendocino, and then it's also grown in uh, Southern Australia, Mexico, Chile, South Africa, and Brazil. It, I also found out it's also grown in areas of Israel. Some characteristics and wines. So let's start with the characteristics of the Petit Syrah. It is one of the deepest yet opaque red wines. Um, it has very high levels of some antioxidants and wines with similar color that you could compare is a Tanat and a Sagranito, or sorry, Sagrantino. <clears throat> so in Petite Syrah wines, you'll find the following dominant flavors. They'll include sugar plum, blueberry, dark chocolate, espresso, black pepper, black tea, berries. Um, it's a very berry and also floral. Um, you'll find floral notes. <clears throat> so there's varieties of different types of Petit Syrah wines and Lodi and Central Valley, California make petite straws that range from 15 to $20. And these vines are gonna have a rich and bold, some rich and bold tannins uh, which, with some sweet berry flavors. And the acidity tends to be smoother. Um, moving to Sonoma in the coastal area of California, they'll make wines from petite straw that range from 18 to $25. And these wines are deeper and have more dense tannins. Uh, they can often be oak aged with hints of berry. <clears throat> berry is gonna be something that's prominent, those dominating uh, flavors uh, in the wines. So moving to Napa and coastal ranges in California, they'll have petite straws that are from $30 and up. So you'll have more of your expensive wines um, that come from this, this area. They tend to have a very intense color, uh, plummy, dark purpley, uh, a fuller body, and uh, bolder flavors with higher tannins. So I wanted to include some two great options of wines that I tried. They're, I'm not gonna give the evaluations of them, but I did try these and I wanted to share with you. Um, so for an inexpensive route to take, Bogle Petite Syrah is about $12. I got it on sale for eight, um, but it's really good. Uh, Bogle is a really good, <laughs> I really like their wines and um, they're not expensive at all. They're very cost-effective um, and I really enjoyed it. So uh, the more expensive Petite Syrah that I did try is, um, it's kind of a popular brand. It's Stag's Leap or not brand, <clears throat> but it's about, uh, it's about a hundred dollars. I, I kind of splurged on this. I ended up splitting it with a friend of mine, but it was really good. I honestly, I would probably rate them the same. 
like they were both really great. Uh, the only difference is like, I could tell that the stag sleep was a little bit more, it had like a richer, like bolder flavors, but I guess it just depends on the vibe you're going for. Uh, and the stag sleep was 35% petite around 45% Cabernet Sauvignon. So that played a factor into it. And just like another like fun fact for you guys, um, the options, like if you're looking for like cheaper versions of Petite Syrah, they're usually made like in Lodi, California. Um, and you can find great value wines from like 10 to $20. Okay, so moving on to serving and decanting of the wine. So when serving and decanting the wine, always serve well, I'll start with decanting. You'll want to decant in a full body wine decanter. Um, you should probably let it sit for two to four hours. Uh, this is gonna allow, because the wine has higher tannins, it's gonna allow it to breathe and like hit the oxygen. And it's good to let this, a petite Syrah rest. Um, so you'll have more of those flavors when you actually consume the wine. Uh, and then when you go to serving it, always, it's a red wine, so always serve it in a red wine glass. Um, and try to make sure it's at a cooler room, to, uh, cooler temperature, around 65 degrees Fahrenheit. This coolness is going to give the wine more of the floral and mineral aromas that we're looking for. So the wine evaluation that I completed for the Petite Syrah and some pairings. Uh, let's get started. So for my wine evaluation, I chose this Dalton Estate 2018 Petite Syrah. It's vintage. Um, got it at Benny's. It was not too expensive. I want to say I paid like around like 18 to $22. Not, not bad. And it was really good. Um, but let's start. So the appearance I found to be deep, a deeper purple kind of plummy, aromas, you know, you get those blueberry berries. Um, I got that floral, almost like a lavendery floral and uh, jammy like scents. I almost, when I was smelling it, I could almost taste like a hint of leather, like when I was smelling it. Um, but then let's move on to like the flavors. There were tons of berry flavors, blueberry and blackberry. And I found some plum. I had hints of vanilla, like an oaky vanilla, very small, but it, it was there. Um, I did get a little of that like leathery bite to it. Um, and the black pepper added to that as well. Um, so for acidity, I found it to be like a medium high acidity, but when consuming it, it was kind of balanced with this like richer, like, finish almost. Um, so moving on to finish, it was a shorter to medium finish. I couldn't really pinpoint exactly which one. I'm so in between when it comes to that. Uh, but yeah, I um, the tannins were like a medium, a soft medium tannin, and I felt it had like a pretty good full body. So I ended up pairing this wine with brisket, I ended up cooking brisket, potatoes, like roasted potatoes and vegetables. But then I topped it with a creamy, like cheesy, creamy, um, like sauce. It was so good. I highly recommend like some sort of like rich, creamy dish. And I would pair it with like a roasted meat. Um, and just a fun fact about this wine, going back to like wines and grapes that are grown in Israel, the grape, um, this wine is sourced from grapes that are grown in Israel, um, in Galilee. So that was really cool to me, um, to find that that's where the grapes came from. <clears throat> okay. So let's move on to these food pairings and spice pairings. So for me, roasted pork, barbecue beef, beef burgers, chicken and mole sauce, found that to be interesting. So I'm excited to try that. Um, and, you know, I did mine with like a roasted brisket. So I feel like any sort of roasted meat would be good with the petite Syrah. Uh, so cheese, aged Gouda, melted Swiss cheese, uh, fresh mozzarella, and 
camembert, <laughs> camembert. Uh, I haven't heard of that cheese, but I would love to try it. Um, so then moving to vegetables, sauteed mushrooms, eggplant, black bean, caramelized onion, stuffed peppers, and currants in umami. I, umami's become my favorite after this class, <laughs> my favorite word to use. Um, so with that being said, let's move on to the spices and herbs. Um, great pairings, black pepper. I mean, you get those, you get the black pepper, like dominating flavor in the wine. Um, when I had my petite Syrah, I also kind of had like a hint of like lavender, which was there and some like cloviness. I don't know. I don't know. That's kind of what I got. Uh, I hope you guys try it and let me know what you guys think or whatever. Um, allspice, rosemary, cinnamon, the list goes on. And my favorite, umami. So guys, thank you so much for listening to me ramble on about Petite Syrah. It's become a favorite wine of mine now, and I hope you thoroughly enjoy it and try it sometime. Thank you.